Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to... Well, the game's on the screen, isn't it? The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, uh, and our randomised playthrough of this game. Using a random character generator and a random quest generator to create our characters for us. When we die, that's it, and we roll a new character, so it is Iron Man, Hardcore, whatever you want to call it. And previously, we, uh, we played couple of characters didn't we yesterday we continued with granny phipps until she met an untimely end at the hands of a kung fu martial artist skeleton and then we played as lord steeton the uh, the vampire savant who was honestly incredibly entertaining and i'm really sad that he died um i, w I could have i could have stood to play with him for a bit longer honestly because uh, that was a very weird and unique character we had going there but, unfortunately, he met his end in the most hilarious way possible. If you haven't seen it already, I will not spoil it for you. But uh, it had me howling with laughter on the stream and the way he died. Um, today, we'll be rolling up a new one. Uh, I just need to get the the actual generators and stuff ready. I've, I've, I've accidentally closed the tab in my browser, which was a little foolish. Uh, let's see... Random character generator. No, 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 that's the wrong one. Where's the correct one? Apparently there's more than one. Um. Oh, no, there we go, we found it, right. The random character generator, now I need the random quest generator. Do, 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 do. Lovely, all right. Okie gokie. Let's let's do this. Right, so I'm gonna go head over to the Marin random screen. Randomize. Okay, we have Cian Slaying. Slaying, really, that's the name, huh? Redguard, hunter, hunter again, huh? Apprentice birth sign, lawful good. We're ignoring the difficulty as usual. Hometown Saran, handicap insomniac again. Oh lovely. Condition is religious. You must leave offerings and donations at every shrine you use. Whatever you come, whenever you come across a particularly expensive item or artifact, you must choose to leave it instead of a lesser donation of gold. You must also take whatever, whichever religious faction you join's quest line to its conclusion. Speaking of which, have his her seems like a more of a female name that one. The names are completely randomly generated and are usually. Really bizarre and difficult to pronounce. Um, the faction is Telvani. It's full of contradictions. This for a red guard, Telvani, that is highly religious and is a member of the Tribunal Temple. Also, the Fighters Guild and the Special Extra is the East Empire Company. Fascinating. Um, our random quest is to destroy 11 Dwemer Centurions and sell any scrap metal for plus four gold at Sedanin. Okay. Oh, it's the old, it's the old Kill Dwemer Centurions quest again, huh? Alright, so that's what we're dealing with today. That's the plan. Uh, I'm going to need to get up the stats for a hunter, because it's an NPC class. Stand up. And, um, the ger ger random generator does give you NPC classes sometimes, name? like hunter, um... Oh god, what was it? This is like this is this is like uh this is like an this is like a Gaelic name. This is it's, it's spelt Cain and it's probably pronounced like like bird or something. Well, not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. Quiet. Here comes the guard. This is where you get off. Come with me. Yeah, your tremendous sense of deja vu, chaps. No, 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 I must beat you to the stairs. I must, I must, I must. There we go. May thanks, thanks, Django. Major's light armor marksman, short blade, sneak athletics, apparently. This is where they want you. Head down. Not even gonna stop and look at you, dude. I'm I'm out of here. You finally arrived. Records don't show from where. Yeah, see, I was provided with a link to a mod yesterday that uh, 
uh, it adds add, adds the non norm, non player character classes to the class list. Unfortunately, I don't have it installed, and the reason for that is because for some bizarre reason the mod requires me to install the Tamriel rebuilt data uh, ESM, and I don't really feel like doing that. I'm playing vanilla more, and I don't want to add Tamriel rebuilt crap just to have that mod. So. Not that I don't like Tamriel Rebuilt, but that's just not the point of this playthrough, so. Uh, so we're a red guard. And I reckon it's... The, the name sounded vaguely female, so... Uh, let's see. Ooh. Weird old lady one. <laughs> Hello! Whatever, you look vaguely human. <laughs> that's just saying a lot, really, when it comes to Morrowind vanilla faces. <laughs> uh, let's go with that. Oh, that's cool. So, what do you get when you're. I haven't played as a red gun in Morrowind in freaking ages! Specials and resist disease. 75%. That's almost as good as an Argonian. That's crazy. Resist poison 75%. Adrenaline rush. Oh, yeah, this is really good. I remember this. Like. Like, Red Gods are actually really pokey in this game. Adrenaline Rush, Fortify Agility, 50 points for 60 seconds on self. Same for Strength, same for Speed, same for Endurance, same... And plus 25 Health as well. Uh, bit bonkers. Once per day, of course, but still. And then the bonuses are all pretty terrible, except for Long Blade, in which they get a plus 15. Uh, so that's a thing. Of course, the Hunter class does not feature Long Blade, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> a useless bonus, hurrah. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. Ah, yes. We've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. I was there thinking to myself the other day, actually, like a perfect name for this series would have been Failed Incarnates. Although, admittedly, it probably doesn't have the same search engine optimization as randomly generated Morrowind does, but Failed Incarnates just... That's, that would have been a really nice title for this. Uh, let's see. Uh, got to do it myself, haven't I? Right, so, uh, class is Hunter. Do we know what the specializations and stuff are, Django? Oh, brilliant. Yes, we do. Stealth, apparently. Agility and speed. Much appreciated, dude. Major skills are light armor. Marksman. Ooh, marksman again, huh? Marksman. Uh, short blade, sneak, and athletics. Okay, short blade. Sneak. And I do like taking athletics as a major skill, actually. It makes you run so much faster. It's nice. It's a nice quality of life improvement, that. Miners were acrobatics, block axe, medium armor, and restoration. Okay. Acrobatics. Block. Axe. Medium armor. That's an interesting choice. Medium armor. And restoration also kind of interesting. There we go. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? I believe it was the apprentice, was it not? Yes, it was. So fortify maximum magic 1.5 times and a 50% weakness to magic. Delightful. Interesting. Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. Well, our alignment is lawful good as well, so I should really try and factor that into my playstyle. Uh, or almost paladin-esque, just without any of the paladin skill set. Although we do have restoration, so... Okay. What are our stats like? Any good ones? Agility and speed are pretty decent, so is endurance. Everything else is a bit so-so. Show your papers to the captain when you exit to get the release fee. Do we have third person view now? We do! Hooray. Continue through to the next building and talk to oh yeah, that's a pretty good run speed for a character out of the out of the gate. I gotta I gotta say I do like that. Alright, we're lawful good, so uh no stealing this stuff. 
we have to take the ring because it is necessary for the tutorial. Morrowind duties. Thank you. All right, then. Because we're lawful good. I'm going to have to hand over the ring. There you go. Okay, then. So let's look at another little once over of our skills. We have short blade 40, which is actually not too shabby at all. Uh, we got that going for us. Um, light armor marksman's okay. Short blade's nice though. So yeah, we get ourselves a, get ourselves some sort some manner of short sword and a bow looks like is what we want. Sneakers are not terrible either. We might be able to get some sneak attacks on people. Axe is there at twenty, but uh, that's getting into sort of like pointlessly rubbish territory. Um, and we can potentially use a bit of medium armor if if the stats suit us. Which is nice. And might want to consider getting a shield because we've got block too. Alright. We're going to do the pilgrimages. Well, it does stipulate that we must complete uh, the, the tribunal temple, so well, I guess we will be, yeah. Care to talk? In addition to our achieving our randomly generated objectives, um, yeah, this character must complete the tribunal temple if able, so. Yep, that's how it's going to go. Uh, right. We only have 87 gold because we're lawful stupid. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess armor, maybe not so much of a concern. Actually, no, it probably should be. I'm, I'm thinking ahead. Like, I'm, I'm going to do the usual thing here probably and go straight to the smuggler cave. Um, I'm just thinking like, I don't think you get any armor from those guys. I think they're all just wearing clothes, aren't they? So I'll probably do with a niche leather cuirass. Um, we also want some manner of short blade. What do you got? For real? What do you got in stock, my man? Iron short sword. Iron tanto. Silver short sword. Too expensive for us, though. Steel short sword. That's more like it. Yeah, let's go for the steel short sword. Um, I will... That's about all we can afford right now. Try and barter him down a couple of bits. And uh, we'll see if we can't get our hands on some valuables to trade for some better stuff, like a bow and arrows. I forgot. I forget sometimes how with the default vanilla animations, the female characters sort of mince around like this. The male characters do the Morrowind strut, and, uh, and the female characters do the Morrowind mints. And then you've got the beast racers who do their funky chicken walk, I suppose, but <laughs> we haven't had a beast race character roll up yet. Um, we've had two Dunmer, an Imperial, and now a Red Guard. I have to admit, one of the things I really like about this series is just the sheer character variety. I mean, I do enjoy playing one character and sticking with them and playing them for a long time and, you know, getting to know them and role-playing it, blah, blah, blah. But I have to admit, there's a certain appeal to just, like, playing a whole bunch of different characters and playstyles. It's it's really enjoyable. All right, Missy. Oh, our sneaking was not very good there at all, was it? Stabbing competition. All right, per tradition, I shall steal your clothes and your boots and that key. And you can keep the terrible dagger, I suppose. Although, I'm already short of cash as it is, I better take it to sell. All right, now we're just going to watch out for uh, Magic Man and his fireballs, uh, particularly since I think we're 50% weak to Magicka. Yeah, that's going to suck. That is going to suck. All right. Where is he? Here he comes. Fun dude. Throw some spells at me. I want you to waste all your magicka. Uh, 
Man, this door frame was the MVP. There we go. Mm, spare boots and a spare dagger. Why not? Uh, I think I'll go without the robes today. Right, let's go rescue the slaves. Actually grab some free torches while we're at it. There we go. Hey guys, go free! Go free! Go free! Warmly greeted, friend. Septums and drakes are the same thing, dude. They're exactly the same thing. It's just different names for the same thing. It's like calling it's like calling American dollars bucks. lady is always a pain. Come back here. In fact, ar archers and range like marksmen NPCs in this game are always a pain as a general rule, actually. You always have to run after them while they shoot you while oh, backpedaling. The, uh, the archer AI for the NPCs in this game is, like, scarily smart compared to everything else. <laughs> clothes. More spare clothes! Even more! And the skooma. Won't touch that. We're awful stupid. Uh, ooh, do we have alchemy as this character? We don't, do we? Nope. Yeah, I keep wanting to pick up all these alchemy ingredients, but there's, like, no point. Steel broadsword? Ah. Short sword would have been better. I not even sell that actually because restore strength is super useful. Never know when you're going to meet a greater bone walker. Old Lady Dunma died. Oh, yeah, like that's uh, that's almost old news at this point. We played a whole other character between this one and her. For future reference, folks, we stream every Saturday and Sunday. So we've already had another random Morrowind stream yesterday. So, uh, yeah. Bone mold arrows, huh? Nice. All right, let's go through the secret passage. Not that secret passage. It's secret to me, because I didn't find it for years. I think there's a pair of pauldrons we can nab in here. Yes, Lord Steeton, the vampire. He was he was quality, man. Like that was almost a character I would have played for an actual series. I thought he was marvelous. Just this just this useless old savant with a really terrible skill set, but because he was a vampire, his skills and abilities were buffed enough that he was actually a very competent fighter. Like he was surviving solely on the fact that he was a vampire and not because of any of his actual skills. I, I did enjoy that a lot. Shame it had to end the way it did. There we go. Oh, that shirt doesn't really work with that, does it? That's better. Marginally. 
fact, you know what? You can the, the Netch the Netch leather pauldrons kind of look like sleeves anyway, so. Although you do get more favourable disposition from NPCs if you're wearing more valuable items, so need to find an expensive shirt, that's what I need. Right, at least I don't have to worry about going outside at the wrong time of day when I'm not playing a vampire. It's got that going for it. have stuff to sell you. Give money. Okay. Don't have a lot to sell him actually admittedly but it's better than nothing. I'll give you those. Hmm. Probably not going to use any scrolls of Figgy's gem feeder so you can have that. And I'll give you the exclusive of store strength, because I'm sure I'll find more of those anyway. Let's try and bar you up to 300. Come on, there we go. It's that uh, high disposition we got from Fargoth doing us favours. Actually. Right, I've now got f 361 gold. What do we want to pick up here? Uh, Netch Leather Shield. Yeah, let's get one of those. Nordic Fur Curus. Seems to be about the same as the Netch Leather, so I won't bother with that. Um, ooh, expensive shirt and expensive skirt. Tempting. But really what we need is a bow. And I'll take 100 Chitin Arrows. Need some gloves, really. He doesn't have any for sale. Oh, actually, no, I take a tell a lie. He's got plenty of chitin stuff for sale, and that's light armor. So. I'll take the lot, I suppose. And have this in return. Mm hmm. Silver short sword's tempting, actually. If you have that, I take this. Okay. What's our guild? Fighter's guild. Alright, we'll get free healing potions at least. We won't get free intervention scrolls. So. Let's get some of those. Alright. See if we can bart you down a bit, good sir. There we go. Oops. No. There we go. Ah, I forgot to give you the bracer. Damn it. Uh, right, I need to set up some quick keys here, don't I? And the boots. Oi, for real, we're not done. That and that. And I will squeeze extra coins out of you. An extra coin out of you. Holy shit, dude. God damn it. <laughs> do we still have the bug? Yeah, we do. We do have the merchant bug because we're playing vanilla. So his his disposition will reset when we well, talk to him again, even though I tried to fleece him. Fantastic. All right, uh, let's equip the arrows, and now let's see. So one will be the short sword, two will be the bow. I guess for giggles, three can be the ninja stars. <laughs> can you use a shield with ninja stars? You can. Interesting. I never bother to use thrown weapons normally, so... Never use, bother to use marksman full stop, actually. Much less thrown weapons, but hey. Okie dokie. 
So our object, our, our random objective is to kill eleven steam centurions and sell them that their scrap metal for a profit at, at here in Sedanine, I believe. That's a bit of a long-term goal, though, as far as I'm concerned. Right now, uh, we mostly just want to survive and also join the temple. So we probably want to go to Balmora, don't we? How much gold do we have? Forty-one. We might go there on foot, you know. Yeah, I think we will. Thread weapon only playthrough. <laughs> There's a challenge. Ah, yes, the Dwemer shock darts. A weapon that will live in infamy. Just saving in case of a crash or something. And to keep in the habit, honestly, because I don't want to go back to recording another Oblivion episode and then forgetting to quick save the entire thing. That would be bad. Yep, this way. I mean, I know the way to Balmora by now, but uh, it doesn't hurt to check the signposts just in case. Playing without distant terrain can make the game delightfully uh, disorientating sometimes, so... Where is it? There you are! Okay. Throwing weapons in third-person view, not a winning combination. Well, that's that. Uh, thank you for the bit, Moritsune. Much appreciated. Is this modded? Nope! It is vanilla as heck. Though technically I do I do have the Morrowind graphics extender installed. I'm only using it to play the game in a higher resolution. Oh, I want to pick up the cork bulb for potions, but this is not an alchemy character, and it's killing me. We're watching you. Bo Duke, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Welcome aboard. Hello, Mr. Gua. Yeah, I, I disabled all of the bug fixes. <laughs> We're going to play it the way Todd intended. Hello, Plagiat. I don't think we actually have a reason to stop here, if I'm honest. I don't have any... I have 40 gold and nothing to sell, really, so... Yeah, sod it. Let's keep going. And thanks for the bits as well, Nutcracker. Much appreciated. I don't have any... I don't have any notifications turned on for those, I don't think, but uh, I appreciate it anyway. There was some absolute galaxy brain genius a couple of years ago that was uh, spamming the chat with, like, one bit and making them the, the repeatedly and then making the the notification pop up and in response I disabled it permanently so I think technically I think well what I originally did was I set it so there was like a threshold um so like above a certain threshold you get uh you're, you're supposed to get a notification but um I don't know if that's even the case anymore, because a lot of things like that with Streamlabs have just kind of become bugged and broken over the years. Like how Nightbot just one day decided to stop working and never has since. Ulumusa. This is dangerous, you know, going in here without any health potions or anything. I'm just going to have a quick poke in here and I'm going to run away like a scared little child if I don't like the look of what I see but we need money which means I need valuables to sell you gonna come up here you're not bringing any friends Ooh, nice oh there, there goes my one lucky hit with the boat That's stabby time apparently all right, all right, we're out, we're out, we're out. Forget it. Screw that. She's obviously much higher level. <sighs> hey, Scrib. 
Can I hang out with you for a minute? Uh, was not. Oh god, right, we're an insomniac, so we're not allowed to rest. <sighs> Goody. I was gonna rest next to Mr. Scrib there and get my health back, but nope! Not allowed. It's verboten. Uh, this is Balmora that way, but. Ritual. I think this also leads to Balmora. Not allowed to rest, is what it says. Except to level up. But we can wait, like in a town where it says like it's illegal to rest here. But, um... We're not allowed to, like, rest, rest. Ooh. Ancestral tomb. I would go plunder it. But uh, I've got no health. And also, I'm lawful stupid, so... No meddling with the remains of people's ancestors for us. We're not only lawful stupid, but we're a tribunal temple lawful stupid, so... Even though we're a red guard. And I'm going to quietly ignore her. Because... well, am I? Hello, madam. Speak, traveller. Hello, please, can you help me? I've lost my way and cannot find the holy place for which I am searching. There is the fields of Kumu. I am on a pilgrimage to this holiest of places, but I seem to have lost my way. Perhaps you could help me find it. Surely you know this area better than I. You would be wrong. Well, technically, no, you're not. I, the player, know it quite well. Uh, say 150 septims? All right, fine. But we have to go to Balmora first. And yes, if memory serves, this lady is infamous for being ridiculously slow. Let's see. Set speed 100. That's helped a bit. Set speed 200. That's more like it. There we go. Hooray for the console. She's a fellow person of the faith and all that, yes, exactly. And we're, we're going to end up going to the fields of Kumu very shortly anyway, if we join the temple, which we will once we get to Balmora, so... Might as well go together, huh? Now, luckily, we're not playing with the Rebirth, so there isn't a lunatic with a crossbow here ready to shoot us. Of course, I have no idea if that guy's still in Rebirth these days, because Rebirth has come along a lot, hell of a long way since... Uh, since the version I used in the Fathis Let's Play, my god. They've changed a lot. Oh, you can totally join the Great Houses if you're not a Domino. Right, there's no restriction on that. The, there's an implication that, that Inderil and Drez would never accept you as an Outlander, but Red Rand, Halalu, and Telvani are more likely to. But, um... Yeah, that's sort of it's sort of a moot point really because Indril and Dreads aren't actually in the game to any real extent, so House Red Run has a red guard. House Red Run has has plenty of outlanders in it actually. Most of the great houses do. Right, first stop, Fighters Guild. Need some potions. Yes, your initial quest giver is Red Ran, is, is a Red Guard lady. That's true. 
Uh, okay. Oof. Yeah. Sorry. Join before taking things from the chest. Uh, hello. Yes. Sign me up. By the gods, you're half dead. Do you know? <laughs> we are, aren't we? Yeah. Let's do the cave rats thing because it's easy money. While we're here. And I don't know if this character has armor, but I'll take a hammer anyway, I guess. Uh, I'll have all of these though, and all of those, and all of those. And honestly, I'll probably take all the arrows and equip them as well. Okie dokie. Cloven fur helm, what? Yes, that's always been there in vanilla. Every fighter's guild chest has a random Clovian fur helm in it. Every day is a school get school day apparently, Django. I can't take from the crates because it doesn't belong to me and I'm lawful stupid. Uh let's go kill some rats. She where is her house? I don't remember. What are you doing, cat? What are you up to? I think he's found a bug and he's chasing it around the room. What? What is it? You silly gremlin. What are you doing? Hello. <sighs> Cave rats are such a nuisance. The AD or my pillows. You like pillows, don't you? Pillows? Pillows, 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 pillows. How about they? We need to heal. Oh god, I'm gonna get killed by the cave rats. Oh god. <laughs> Look at her, she's like, I'm ready. And she's like, oh my god, this is the idiot they sent. Okay, good. Rat number one is dead. And you appear to be stuck in fisticuffs mode. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. She followed me out. She has good. You are following me at least still, right? Yeah, that's okay then. Oh god, they're gonna kill her. No! Alright, we need to leave. You need to stay here. Wait here. Oh my god, character, just hit the target, please! It's just a rat! Mind you, to be fair, for a level 1 character... How dare you? <laughs> for a level 1 character, this fight is always a little bit... A little bit tough. I'm gonna stand here and wait for my fatigue to come back. Also, my screen seems to be stuck in red mode. That's, that's grand. I can fix that with a save and a reload or something. Low level combat. Yeah, low level combat with no fatigue. It's the best. It's great. What are you doing? He's milling around behind my computer monitor right now. He's just looking for trouble to cause because he's bored. Wealth beyond measure, Outlander. Norwegian decoy! Surprise. Greetings from Norway. I always forget that there's a voice thing added to that. Thank you for that donation. I didn't actually catch the whole notification there because I was too busy dealing with the puss cat that is now walking around on my keyboard. Colin, what are you doing? What are you doing, dude? Just settle down, for goodness sake. It's about your nap time anyway, for goodness Ugh. You can probably hear his bell jingling, folks. There's someone watching you. Ah, he's trying to eat my hand. Now he's licking my hand. You're a pain in the bum sometimes, Colin. You really are. Anyway, Norwegian, thanks very much for that donation. Much appreciated. How's that slave? You're not long ago. Stop trying to eat my hand. Little bugger. Little gremlin. You are being a gremlin today, aren't you? Being a little goblin. 
tonight. Rah, rah, rah. Yes, yes. You're very fierce. <sighs> Made me spill my tea now. Thanks for that, cat. Ugh. I had to dodge his claws just then. And elbowed my cup of tea in the process. Everything is going so well today. <laughs> uh, goblin brain demands chaos. Colin, yes, he, he is. Colin has two modes, you see. He has sleepy, friendly, nice pussycat mode. Where he's a little lush and he's lovely and he has pets. And he snoozes next to you and likes cuddles. The other mode is chaos goblin. And right now he's in Chaos Goblin mode. Ah, oh, right. Once more onto the breach, dear friends. You know, I've got to be honest, like, I don't... It'd be nice if the game gave us a character that didn't use short blades. I spent the last seven frickin' years playing a character with short blade in this game. I want something else. Speak, <laughs> traveler. <sighs> Right. What were we doing? Fighters Guild, that was it. What do you want? The What the heck? Oh, we haven't actually spoken to what's her face right. to tell her the job is done. <sighs> I forgot that was a little, little wrinkle of the whole thing. This poor old woman's just like, when are we going to stop running? Quickly, Outlander! I haven't much time. Cave rats are dead. There you go. Thanks for the gold. <laughs> right. I, I'd quite like to get the, uh, the the demon tanto from Revere before we go any further, is what I'm thinking, basically. That's what I'm trying to get a little bit of extra dosh here before we leave Balmora. Don't think I, well, no, obviously I can't afford it right now. That's why I'm doing the jobs for the money. Django, you bloody galaxy brain. Um, orders. Cave rats, done. Orders. Egg poachers, yes. Advancement? Thank you, we're an apprentice now. Okay. All right. I would go rest right about now, but... Character's an insomniac, so no rest for us. Uh, let's see. Let's go join the temple. <sighs> Alright, where's the dude? I forget, is he upstairs or downstairs in the Balmora temple? They don't really have a thing about ramps instead of stairs, don't they? I like to give their calves a good workout everywhere they go. Uh, not you. Speak it's you over here, isn't it? <sighs> Welcome, my child. Do you seek to join the I'm hearing this in, like, Kai Wynn's voice from Deep Space Nine because I was watching Deep Space Nine earlier today. Welcome, my child. Uh, you have a promising look. Perhaps we could use you. Do you wish to join? Or shall you hear our doctrine first? Let's hear the doctrine. Your fourfold duties are to faith, family, masters, and all that is good. Perform holy quests and bring luster to the temple. 
Never transgress against your brothers or sisters in thought or deed, as we are all one body. If you somehow fail to uphold these ideals, you must speak with a master or the patriarch to be cleansed of your wrongdoings. Still want to join? Yes, I am worthy. You are now a layman of the temple. Welcome, sister. I am... <laughs> I have no idea how to begin to pronounce that. Um, I am one of several masters you can go to get your duties go to to get your duties from and if you perform well advancement blah 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 before i give you any other duties you should prove your faith by making the pilgrimages of the seven graces take this book the pilgrim's path it describes where the pilgrimage sites are after you have completed these pilgrimages speak with me again i should warn you that while most of these are easy the pilgrimages of ghost gate and the ready man are more difficult you may wish to do those last righty ho all right, one moment, folks. The cat is scratching at the door because he wants to go out right now. So I'll, I'll be back with you in a moment. Right, I'm back. Okay. Sorry, still adjusting the headset to get it comfortable again, because I have to take the bloody thing off to open the door because the cable's not long enough. Right. Peak professionalism... Professionalism... on this channel as usual. Alright, we've joined the temple. We have the Pilgrim's Path. And as luck would have it, the first pilgrimage is the Fields of Kumu, the Shrine of Humility. Here, Lord Vivek met a poor farmer whose guar had died. The farmer could not harvest his muck without his guar, and his, he could not provide for his family or his village. So the Lord Vivek removed his fine clothes and toiled in the fields like a beast of burden until the crop was harvested. It is at the Fields of Kumu we go to pray for the same humility Lord Vivek showed on that day. The fields of Kumu are west of Saran, on the north shore of Lake Amaya, as you head towards Pelagiad. The shrine is between two rocks, and most easily noticed while travelling east along the road. Aloff's farm nearby has a small dock on the north bank of Lake Amaya. This is the only dock nearby which Aloff kindly allows servants of the temple to use. It is customary to leave a portion of muck at the shrine to represent Vivek's humility. Jolly good. That's a very diplomatic way of putting it, Django, but, you know. Um, so the field of Kumi Shrine is down there. Uh, might be quicker to go there via Saran. Would also be more expensive to go there via Saran, however. Ah, oh, look at that beautiful Morrowind night sky. Totes unmodded, and it still is easily the best looking thing in the game, years later. I really nailed it. I remember, I, I distinctly remember like playing Oblivion for the first time when it came out, and 
you know, everything about the game was absolutely gorgeous compared to Morrowind, including those faces that everyone loves to make fun of these days. Like, everyone forgets that when Oblivion came out, the, the character faces in that game looked incredible by comparison to this. But, um... I remember, th I remember th noticing at the time, uh, the first time I played Oblivion, like, why is the night sky so much less good why walk than Morrowind? I thought that was a sentence that needed some help in the grammar department, but uh, you know what I mean. It's like, why the heck does this night sky not look as good? I remember looking in my graphics settings like, is this something I've not switched on? What's going on here? Barbie dolls carved out of driftwood. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's certainly an apt description. Water is also another fun regression in Oblivion Skyrim. Well, bearing in mind that water didn't look like this in vanilla, that's a graphics extender thing. A non-negotiable upgrade from graphics extender. But um, if you did, admittedly, a Mor Morrowind did have decent water if you if you turned pixel shading on, if you had a GPU that supported that at the time. Um, if you if you didn't have pixel shading, the water looked horrifically bad. But um, if you did, it had quite a nice shader effect. But anyway, uh, to this day, I, I don't mind. The, I don't mind Oblivion's character faces. I really don't. I, I get asked, like even now with the new Oblivion series in the comments, why aren't you using Oblivion character overhaul, you scrub? And I'm just like, I actually don't have a problem with the vanilla faces. They're very, you know, specifically unique to Oblivion, and I like them. They look like people. Perhaps the skin textures could stand to be a bit better. But they do look, by and large, like actual people. Oblivion character overhaul makes everyone look, like, really attractive. And I hate that. I really don't like that. It makes everyone look super attractive, and uh, there's something a little cartoonish about the skin textures as well. But it's all down to personal preference, isn't it? Some people love it, and that's fine. Uh, likewise, some people hate Better Cities, which I always use for Oblivion. I, I always use it because I fucking love it. I think Better Cities is a superb mod. I can't live without it. But some people really don't like it at all. I know Pem can't stand it. I remember I remember watching him play Oblivion, and he was like, no, Better Cities sucks. Like, Fair enough, I guess, but I, I think it's great. But that's the wonderful thing about mods. They are optional. You can install whichever ones you like and leave the ones you don't. Yes, I know what you mean, Hydragon. Especially with Skyrim, it is really difficult to find a, a mod for Skyrim that improves the graphical fidelity of NPC faces without making them look like supermodels. It is really, really irritatingly difficult to find a mod that does that. using familiar faces on new Morrowind installation. I can't remember which is the one I usually use for Morrowind. Uh, I, I actually do find a lot of the Morrowind head, head replacers have a similar problem actually to the Skyrim ones. Um, a lot of them are just a little too pretty and some of them are just downright cursed and horrible. Like, seriously, some of them are really dreadful. 
I genuinely prefer the vanilla faces over some of them. Um, but there is one specifically that I've repeatedly used over the years. I think it might have been Wesley's replacer, but I'm not sure. It might have also been familiar faces because that rings a bell. Uh, I forget which one it was, but uh, there's like one very specific one for Morrowind, which is actually very good. Kind of keeps the, the vibe of the vanilla faces, but you know, adds some much needed polygons. Are we there yet? I think it's this way. It was weird as well, though, because, like, I remember when, when, when Blood Moon came out and they added some extra heads and hairs for the Nords. Um, and they were noticeably better quality than any of the other phases and hairs in the game. I, I ain't for, for a long time in Morrowind, I pretty much played exclusively Nord characters just because I liked having a much less weird ass looking player character. Here's the place. You're going to open a dialogue box for me? Yeah, there you go. Thank you for your help. Whoever you are. <laughs> Here's the payment I promised you. May all of your travels be safe. 150 gold. That's quite generous, actually. Right, I need to go find some muck. Luckily, there's an island over there with some muck sponges on it. Sister slaying of the temple. Yes. Swimmy, swim, swim. Please, no slaughterfish. I had to say it, didn't I? Sorry, how much health do you stupid slaughterfish have? Oh, short blade sucks. These aren't even the big ones, they're just the little ones. Finally. You guys want some as well, huh? I'm gonna go ahead and say it, folks. This this character's build sucks. This this character really is just appallingly bad in the combat department. Mm. Even by the standards of your usual level one character, this character sucks. Precious muck. There it is. Had the bloody fight for that, didn't I? <laughs> no, you don't get to transform at will as a, as a regular werewolf in Morrowind. You need Hercene's Ring for that. Being a regular werewolf is completely involuntary transformations. And you can't trigger them even if you want to. Much like with vampires, it's uh, it's really... It's really a curse, more than anything else. It's supposed to be a curse, and it feels like it.
All right, we've donated the blood, the, the 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 muck, and got a blessing. Grace of humility. Thank you for your humility, Lord Vivek. I shall neither stir, uh, strut, nor preen in vanity, but I shall know and give thanks for my place in the greater world. Yes. Marvelous. Now, temporary blessing we got for that is the feather one. Should make a run. Let's run a bit faster for a while. That's nice. So. Next up is the Shrine to Stop the Moon. Ah, Vivek. Lovely, we're going to see Vivek. Let's head back to Balmora first. Yeah. Actually, can I make a nice little shortcut here and cut across the hills? Oh god, you're right, yeah. I almost forgot. Yeah, we got the, the condition religious for this character, which means I always have to leave an offering of gold and or a magical item. I mean, I mean I'll mean, i read the text of that again, just so we know what we're dealing with. Um, you must leave offerings and donations at every shrine you use. Whenever you come across a particularly expensive item or artifact, you must choose to leave it instead of a lesser donation of gold. You must also take whichever religious fashion you join's quest line to its conclusion. Yep. So uh, we need to we need to leave. I don't I don't really have any particularly amazing artifacts on me, so I will just leave some gold, I suppose. Um, offerings and donations. Well, let's 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 get into this a little bit. Then we could leave uh, this hammer. Collection of little things, you know. Let's leave leave some gold. Let's leave like fifty gold. Um, and the bone mold arrows. There is no way to place arrows and not have them be weird in this game. And uh, I'll donate one of my scrolls, I suppose. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Praise Lord Vivek, etc. There we go. Right. sword's about to break. Oh god, you're probably right. It's silver after all. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, gotta leave the hammer. Gotta leave the hammer. It's part of the blessing. That's kind of what makes it a sacrifice. It's alright. We've got a we've got a bow. We have a backup. Yeah, I, I, you know, so now you mention it, like, probably wouldn't have been able to fully repair the sword with the hammer anyway, because our armor skill is rubbish. Ah, Arkenthand, hello. Oh boy. Hello there, Mr. Kwama Forager. Major for store fatigue here. Yeah. You little gits in your little weird hitboxes. There we go. Got a hit. And uh, I think this arrow. It's like an. There we go. Something else wants me dead. Who could it be, I wonder? Well, there is one perk to being a marksman character, and it's this. Ah, uh, I mean, it's this. There we go. You don't have to put up with the cliff raises bullshit quite so much if you have a bow and arrow. You know, once you get a good enough bow and arrow and good enough skill, you can shoot them, one-shot them out of the sky, and it's such a satisfying feeling. Would have liked some racer plumes for the trouble there, actually, but never mind.
Hello, right, Scrib. Cliff race is the literal worst. Do you know what, honestly? I think I find slaughterfish to be more, more annoying. Cliff races are, have a lot more, uh, sort of, meme potential. But, um... Christ alive. There we go. But uh, I think slaughterfish are genuinely more annoying. Because they always attack you at a point where you're kind of vulnerable anyway, when you're swimming. Because you're moving more slowly and... And what have you. It's very foggy, isn't it? I wonder how trash this is going to look on the encoding on YouTube. Ooh, getting some hits. Way, look at that. I may want to consider installing a mod that allows me to de-knock my arrows. Where am I going right now? I've completely taken a wrong turn. <laughs> oh dear. Can you quick bind your arrows? That's a interesting idea. Actually. Yeah. No, it doesn't seem to work. I can re equip them quickly, but I can't unequip them. No, honestly, right now the music is almost ruining the ambience. It's glorious, but... I'm kind of enjoying... Just... The near silence punctuated by the random rumbles of, of wind along the, uh... Along the foyada. Distant sounds, etc. It's very, it's very creepy. Very, very atmospheric, especially with the fog. Okay, we don't want to go this way. No, it, it does like to it does like to just sort of blare the Morrowind theme tune at you at inappropriate moments sometimes, doesn't it? I don't mind most of the time, but there are occasional moments like that where actually having no music is better than having it turned on. Tree Malaki. Stealth Archery and Morrowind. Unbelievable. I didn't actually get a critical hit there though, sadly. Critical hits are a weird thing in this game. They're not always guaranteed, even if you do make a sneak attack. Well, you can keep your hound meat. If memory serves, you can't get a critical hit at all if you use a magic weapon. It's very weird. Very weird. It's a bit like how in Skyrim you can't use the uh, the fasting, fast attacking dragon shout with a magic weapon some sort of weird hard-coded thing going on yeah 
yeah, stealth is not really worth much of a damn in this game, unfortunately. <sighs> Most of the areas you're in are so cramped, there's nowhere to sneak past. Enemies don't move very much. NPCs don't move at all, so, you know, trying to rob their houses while they're asleep and things like that is virtually impossible. Um, it's staggering how much of an improvement all of the stealth mechanics were in Oblivion when it came out compared to this. I've come back to Balmora. Why? <laughs> I guess I was going to take the Silt Strata to Vivek. Um, but in truth, I need to get my get my short sword repaired. That is the downside of silver weapons. They damage easily. 87 gold. Kick your beef. I don't suppose you've got anything else from my mouth, Melda. Some greaves, perhaps. There we go. Oh, he's got adamantium armor as well from the free LC. Ah, I forgot about that. I think there's a lady in really Alderun that actually sells some unique female-only armor, actually, from the free DLCs as well. The dominant armor, or whatever it's called. Might actually get that, you know, because I think we are a light armor character, and I think that is light armor, so. The first time I've ever bloody used it. We're watching you, scum. Funky1892. Missed the beginning Same of the stream. What friend. glorious sort of adventure are we on? Uh, we're currently doing the Tribunal Temple. Our, our current random quest we have is to kill 11 Steam Centurions and sell their parts for a profit in Sedanine, for some reason. Um, but one of the stipulate our character is a, is, is, a, is a Tribunal Temple member who is religious, has the r religious condition. Um, one of the stipulations of that is that we have to complete the Tribunal Temple main quest, if able. So... Um, it's kind of what we're working on right now. We're doing the pilgrimages. We just did the shrine, shrine of the fields of Kumu. And now I have to do the ones here in Vivek. Our alignment is also lawful good as well. So that's sort of uh, impacting the playthrough as well in various ways. Mostly in that I'm much poorer than I usually would be. Lawful stupid. Yes. Shape armor that doesn't change shape if a male character wears it. Yeah, I think that's the stuff. Which is really weird because... Like, in the Tribunal expansion, they did add female versions of, of armor. So... Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, really, but hey. In vanilla Morrowind, like proper vanilla Morrowind, um, all armor looked the same on men and women, so... There were no boob plates or anything. Uh, and then in, then Tribunal came along and they actually... They edited some of the armors to make them different for female characters, I think. One of them was Netch Leather Armor. One of them was... Um, Imperial Chainmail. I think Steel Armor as well. The Steel Curus got changed. There it is. That's the old shrine to stop the moon over there. No, it didn't come from that DLC. It didn't come from that DLC. It was a feature of Tribunal. I can tell you that for a goddamn fact because I had those changes in my game back before I had an internet connection with which to download the DLC, so... Uh, we need a potion for this, don't we? We need to go buy a potion. I've got enough gold. You gotta bear in mind, like like back back when this game was released, like most people didn't have like internet beyond dial up, so downloading entire DLCs was out of the question. 
So, you know, you had the expansions because you got them on a disc. You know, you went to the, went to the, went to the game store and you bought it on a disc in a box. But uh, the free DLC, that was like a download only type affair. They, they might have gotten distributed with a few gaming magazines, admittedly, because they, they used to do that sometimes, along with patches, actually. I definitely remember that being a thing with PC Gamer. They would put patches for popular games on the demo disc thing that, that came with every issue. But um, I, regardless, if you if you you know if you didn't have internet, you didn't get the DLCs. Uh, we need potion of rising force of some description. I, don't, I need to check. Freshest ingredients. What kind do we need? That's not what I meant to do. Next. Uh, let customers leave behind a potion of rising force. Oh, right, and you only have the exclusive one, which costs a fortune. You... Git. <laughs> uh, we can't afford that. We cannot afford the potion. Right then. Um... That's a problem. Might have had an if I if I hadn't had to make that offering at the previous shrine. Alright, let's go visit the foreign quarter and let's see if we can get a job from the Fighters Guild. We're supposed to join House Telvani. House Telvani ain't gonna pay a shit, Django. Fuck House Telvani. <laughs> they won't give us any rewards. Great houses are terrible like that. With the exception of Hlalu, they actually pay you. The other ones don't. We'll get cool magical trinkets to sell. Not until we're like way, way, way into the quest line. At the start, they don't give you jack. I'm, I need I need Dosh, and I need it now, so Fighters Guild it is, baby. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Snore. Hope you enjoy it, man. Dominion's 5 is bloody great. I ended up buying the, um, like, specially ordering the the colour version of their, uh, of their printed out sort of, like, physical copy of the manual for that game because I just wanted to read about the game in bed in the evening before I went to sleep just, just to sort of, like, think up new strategies and, uh, and new ideas. I wanted to have all the res reference material on paper. We need to go to the plaza, don't we? Or do we? No, yeah, we do. Fulfilling your duty to House Redoran is its own reward, yes. Honor. Duty. All of that stuff. What is your favorite great house and why is it red around? Good question, Dark Humor. It's red around because they're the only house that doesn't keep slaves, and I think that's a perfectly good reason to like them. They also have the coolest armor, in my opinion. And Scar in Aldrune is just freaking cool. I love the mansions everybody gets in there. Anything I can do for you? I wish Redoran had good mods. They have the Pax Redoran mod, which is not bad. It doesn't do anything crazy like Rise of Health Talvani does, but it does add some lots and lots of extra nice dialogue, tweaks a few quests, adds a bunch new a bunch of new ones. 
It's. I think it's in game and in law, man. Like they don't keep slaves. I, I'm pretty sure it's written down in a book here or there, like the reason why. But they they don't keep slaves, and they definitely don't have any in the game. Suring hard heart. Uh, oh yeah, no, right. We're gonna go get orders for the orc. I forgot. It's you. Nagro Shagramp said he'd deliver a ring to Rhaenys Ionef, but it hasn't delivered. Go talk to Rhaenys Ionef and bring the juice door feather ring to him, to me, to you. To me, to you, to me, to you. Juice door feather ring for our client. Nar says he doesn't have the ring, but he's a liar. Find him in the Halalu Canton Plaza and bring me that ring. Halalu Canton Plaza. Stop, stop. Yeah, obviously there's yeah, there's nothing that compares to all that huge load of mods. To be yeah, you're absolutely right, Anything Django. I can do for you? Unfortunately, there's nothing that compares to that. Ransack the supply chest, as you do. What is it, citizen? <laughs> I remember. When I played this game a very long time ago and I was still sort of getting used to it and stuff like that. I often ended up joining the temple because I just liked the fact that if you join the temple, the ordinators aren't quite so dickish to you. I was like, the cool dudes with the cool armor are my friends now. This is awesome. All right. Halalu, Canton. Halalu is this way. Tamara rebuilt touches northwestern Morrowind, then we'll get some good red and content. Yeah, probably actually. I think your map is so much more high quality. What do you mean? Looks the same to me. I like how the foreign quarter is even like architecturally separate from the other cantons. Like it doesn't have the adjoining bridges up, up on the higher levels. It's not blurry. Well, it's not, mostly because it's not zoomed in. With uh, the Morrowind code pack, uh, code patch fixes to the uh, the map to allow you to include Tamriel Rebuilt, uh, it expands the map borders. So you see, like at the moment, like I can't move the, the map any further than this um, the code patch changes that but a side effect of that is it makes the map much smaller like it zooms it out and so to make up for that they added a hotkey which allows you to zoom in to make up for that and when you do zoom in it goes very blurry if you play in 1080p but with the vanilla un unpatched map this is what it looks like so it was a big problem though when, when Tamara Rebuilt came out because like most of the mainland you couldn't actually see on your minimap. It was a bit of an issue. Uh, that's why you had to. That's why they included a lot of in-game paper maps um, that you could buy from booksellers and things like that to help you navigate around because you actually couldn't see most of it on your actual in-game minimap until the code patch came along and fixed that. So. Lalu Plaza, right. This is probably going to suck, because this is probably going to involve trying to persuade the dude, and our speechcraft is shite, and we have no money with which to bribe him. Gotta love it when this happens. Oh, I'm playing a fighter character in the Fighters Guild and they want me to go and speechcraft some dude. 10 out of 10 there. Right. Give me the juice door feather ring, you bastard. I don't got any ring. I don't know what you're talking about.
I don't even have a charm scroll. <laughs> oh, the game really hates this character. The game really hates this character for some reason. She survived a lot longer compared to some of the others, but... It hasn't been any easier. You say that, Django, but with vir virtually no speechcraft skill, you have to sit there clicking taunt for like 500 times. I'm not exaggerating when I say 500. Yes. Do I have any money to pay murder bounty? No. If I had, if I had money, I'd just bribe the guy. There's another way around this. I could try pickpocketing him. But uh, everybody will see me if I do that, so that's not going to work. No, he, isn't, he hasn't even got anything. He's just got gold on him. At least that's all I could find. Yeah, exactly, exactly. When you get the disposition position to zero through f success, successive failed taunts, it then actually becomes even more difficult to get a successful taunt. So you have to give them money in order to continue attempting to taunt them. It's so silly. Where does he live? Uh, that's a good question. Where do you live, dude? <laughs> Nagra Shagramf. No, oh, my luck, he doesn't live anywhere. We're watching you, scum. It's a shortcut through to the waste works from here, I think. I'm waiting. Hello, everybody. Balon, thank you very much for 59 months of subage. Late to Strem. What are we doing this playthrough? We are a Red Guard hunter who is a fanatically religious member of the Tribunal Temple. Who is currently in Vivek trying to do the pilgrimage, but has no money with which to buy a potion to actually do the, the shrine to stop the moon. Um, so we're doing a fighter's guild quest right now to try and get some money to buy a potion. But unfortunately, we have to try and get this orc dude to convince us to give him give us his juice door feather ring. And we have no speechcraft skill and no money to bribe him with. So um, it's it's just one problem piled on top of another at the moment. At the moment, I'm desperately trying to run around and see, maybe, see if maybe I can find his house. But I don't think he's got one. There aren't really any living quarters in these cantons. Tidy. Speak, traveler. What is it, citizen? So, there's really kind of no way for us to do this quest right now, aside from just desperately hitting the admire button, or the taunt button. And we're probably not going to get very far doing that. Our speechcraft is 10. So yeah. I'm waiting. There is the intimidate option, which is basically like admire, but once the conversation is over, his disposition shoots right down. I don't know if it's easier to pull off than admire, though. It never really seemed to be. It seemed like a really pointless option, because it was just like admire, but worse. If I could afford to buy one, Hydragon, we wouldn't have this problem in the first place.
I didn't know that. Intimidate is pretty interesting because in addition to the other effects, it permanently reduces the NPC's hidden fight value, meaning they're less likely to initiate combat willingly. That's so cool. I never knew that. Intimidate is based on the difference between your level and the NPCs. Is it really? I didn't know that either. Well, that doesn't help us much because we're level one, so. <laughs> oh, dear. Hi, I'd like to admire you. Oh. Damn it. Oh, this is not going well. Well, that's that then. Guess we're going to have to find some other way of making some money. I really don't know how to do that at short notice, though. Other than wandering off out of the town and going to find a cave to loot or something. I guess that's just what we'll have to do. Go adventuring. Hello. Oh, you sell lockpicks and stuff, huh? And you do training. Time to punch mud crabs. Yep. Fish for pearls. That is actually always a fairly decent option as long as you're up for fighting some slaughterfish. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Trickier without water, water breathing, though. Hello, mud crabbies. All right. Oh boy, here it comes. Why is slaughterfish so difficult to kill? Yeah, hopefully it's just the fish and no dregs or drews or whatever. I don't think they hang around down here, though, generally. Famous last words! But, uh, no, really, I think, uh... They, 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 they tend to hang around more up, sort of, like, around Sadrath Moor and Dagon Fell and that kind of area. Azura's Coast and Sheagorad and that. Well, at least my light armor skill's increasing. It's the ultimate consolation prize in an Elder Scrolls game. Well, at least my armor skill is increasing as I suck here. Nah, yeah, we're not, we're not rubbing tombs. We are a lawful good religious temple nutter. We're not robbing tombs, I'm afraid. I think we're so low level it's not even spawning the larger slaughterfish. It's amazing. Where have all the bloody collops gone? I demand collops. There's some. Oh, give you a rest. Empty. I think there's like a 50-50 chance with these things, usually. 
Ah, oh, I hear a cat scratching at the door to be let in. The Chaos Goblin's gotten bored, obviously. I'll open the door for him in a second. I just want to get these. Oh, there's another one. See what I mean about these guys being more annoying than Cliff Racers? They just are. They're proper irritating. Right, hold on, folks. Just one second. Okay. The goblin is back. Hello. He's wandering around. Scent marking a few things to make sure everybody knows they're still his. Scratching at the scratching post. Now what are you going to do? You going to come up and have a nap? Oh, I think he might do, actually. He's on my lap now. Don't walk on the keyboard. How many times, Colin? You can walk around on the desk. Just don't touch the keyboard. You gonna have a lie down? Yeah. You give me head, head bumps, aren't you? Okay, good. All right. You get comfy there, Milato. He's watching the mouse cursor on the screen when it appears at the moment like doing that, don't you? One of these days you're going to catch that dastardly mouse cursor. I think that's all of them. Except for maybe that one. Got to keep an eye on the breath counter. Don't want to end this playthrough by being drowned. That would be dumb. Colin, what are you doing, dude? You just decided to roll over on top of my hand that's on the mouse. Thanks, bud. It's Evan Hart. Check it out. I, I get that you want to be affectionate, Cat, but it's making it very difficult for me to actually move the mouse around. Thank you. Yep, he's being a cat. He's being a big peak cat, doing his cat duties. Hey, dude, I'm trying to I'm trying to help you. You've got some schmutz stuck to the end of your whiskers. I'm trying to get it off. There you go. Right, sorry. Cat interlude is pretty much over now. I promise. Yeah, I see some collops out here. The, the water's getting really deep in this neck of the woods, so... Oh, Christ, hello. Uh, no, it's not. They're not caught up. It's just those big barnacle things. Damn it. Let's see. Did we get any pearls? We got two. I was hoping for a bit more than that, really. Yeah, Oblivion zombies are pretty, pretty creepy, aren't they? 
pretty sure though the rating of the game was increased because of those guys. Oh, hello, underwater cave. This is uh, yeah. Don't want to go in there as a level one character. Believe me. Not unless you've got like ten jugs of Sujama anyway. Ten-year-old me was was terrified of sixth house caves in this game. Friggin' creepy. It's too hot on Dwemer ruins either, actually. You go in there, you see all the gloom and dark, and the the red red candles glowing faintly. It's like, nope, I'm leaving now. Bye bye. Not interested. There we go, another feeding frenzy. Mother wind, right? Even the fish hate you. Put that one on the tourist board advert. makes it all better. Oh, there we go. Let's finally found a big one. Not anything here, though, is there? It's like the southernmost tip of the map. Me, big ugly bastard. Oh, God, what is happening? What the heck was that? Oh, my GPU just had a seizure. Couldn't handle the mighty slaughterfish. Another one down there. Let me just check, folks. There wasn't any, isn't anything weird running in the background I need to get rid of. I forgot about. I, I wouldn't be the first time I'd accidentally left an entire game running in the background or something. It's happened before. Nope, there doesn't seem to be anything this time, though. Okay, computer just had a weird moment. Hope it doesn't have any more of those weird moments. I was about to say, there's islands on the map here, but I don't see any, but they're all the way over there. Need a healing potion. Cat, why are you doing this to me? He's just got a paw on my hand, pressing down on it, but, like, he hasn't completely retracted his claws, so it's slightly painful. Why, why you do this, Colin? Why? Why do you make my life difficult? Why is your face covered in cobwebs? Where have you been sticking it? Because cat. Yeah, that's probably the only answer. Cat must do what cat must do. Yeah, I see you down there, you little bastard. Bastards. Oh, they're gathering. Oh, boy. I 
the slaughterfish is glitching out so hard he looks like two. He's about to ascend into a higher plane of existence. Sake. Leave me alone. I just want to go to this island. In the vain, desperate hope there's something of value there. Surely Bethesda must have just been like, right, it's the most southern point, most southernmost point on the entire map. Surely some bozo is going to want to go check it out. Let's put something there to reward him with. Oh, there's some collops at least. There is something. The Mudan Grotto. Why's that ring a bell? Have I been here before? Probably. I don't think there's a place in this game I haven't been to, been to at some point. Ah, an underwater grotto with no water breathing. That's going... This, truly, this is an excellent idea and will not backfire. It's going to be full of dregs, isn't it? This is go this is going to be how it ends for this character. Must get back to breathable air. Ah! Yeah, not a chance. We can't explore this place. Not without some form of water breathing. Not a chance. Maybe let's quickly... Yeah. Give, give me a pearl. Give me a pearl, you bastard. Thank you. Is there another one in here? No. Oh, God. Don't get stuck. There is wick wheat on this little island here, apparently. Or not. It's just... Oh, it's like bulrushes or something. <laughs> oh, excuse me, folks. Ugh. That was Mudan Grotto Jungle. Oh, we can level up finally. Let's do it. Only allowed to rest for an. Oh, my God. Yeah, and the rat as well. That's just that was the most amazing part of it was just the additional rat for giggles. A 
I guess there's upsides to being an insomniac. You don't have to deal with this asshole and his chums. Well, we're going to nip this in the bud. I'm going to go see Mr. Adamantium Armor and, and Ebonheart and get this put, put a stop to this as soon as possible. However, I think our source of monies just showed up in the form of this fella on the bright side, so... Hello, jerk face. I'm taking all your stuff. Oh my god! Why do the Dark Brotherhood assassins have pets now? Since when was this a thing? He swim yes yes he can oh god oh for god's sake why is uh, Morrowind's AI pathfinding actually good now all of a sudden and I really don't need it to be Clipping through this rock, why can't I? Oh god! Perfect. <laughs> Look at the little fart quabble forager. <laughs> oh Christ. He managed to get himself free. Now I'm stuck. Oh, God. Welcome I'll piss off you. I have prepared a place for you. Uh, wasn't talking to you, Raiders. Uh, I'm, I was talking to the Quabble Forager. I feel I should clarify. Thank you for, <laughs> for the raid. Did he just push me into the water? He did. You're not allowed to do that. You're not even supposed to be here, Quabble Forager. This is this is this is intolerable. Very edge of the known world here, and and these bastards still spawn to go get, to go, go and attack me. Flippin' heck! Right. Anyway, thanks for that raid. Much appreciated. Welcome, folks. Today we're playing randomly generated Morrowind, where we roll. We use a random character generator and a random quest generator to roll random characters and do random quests. Um. And they only get one life. If they die, then we have to roll a new character. Currently, we're being tormented by Dark Brotherhood assassins as I try to level up. There we go, finally. Speed, agility. That's all the bonuses we're getting, apparently. Uh, I suppose I'll put a point into strength. Probably can't go wrong with that, really, can you? Oh, for goodness sake! This island sucks. How, where are you all coming from? There's nothing here but seawater. 
rocks with weird collision meshes. Mudcrab assassins, yes. Gotcha. Don't get any of my arrows back, apparently. Except for that one. Oh, dear. Well, we've got a huge pile of Dark Brotherhood armor to sell now, so that's good. That Something came of this ridiculous trip into the middle of nowhere. After all. Oh, I need to try and remember how we got here now. That's the island we were on. Then I swam over here to try and get away from the assassin. Probably going to get attacked by a slaughterfish. Yep. Right on cue. Apparently this character is just all about suffering. We have, the, we have a terrible character build. And terrible luck on top of that, apparently. And yet, it's probably. I'm pretty sure this character has lasted longer than any of the others. Bizarrely. In spite of all the suffering she's having to go through, she's actually living longer than all the others. This, this way. She embodies the spirit of the religious pilgrimage, yes. That's, that's what we're doing at the moment, currently. The, uh... Our current randomly generated quest is to kill 11 steam centurions and sell their spare parts for a profit in Seda Uh, but... Additionally, one of the character quirks we got was religious, which means that we have to leave extra special offerings at every shrine we use, and also we must join and complete the uh, religious faction questline that we've been assigned to, and we got Tribunal Temple for this one, so... At the moment, we're partway through doing the Pilgrimage of the Seven Graces, and we're on this mad, weird detour out into the middle of nowhere because I didn't have enough money to buy the potion of levitating to donate to the shrine so I needed to get some money uh, which led me to go diving for pearls literally to try and try and find pearls and collops to sell and then I ended up out here and then assassins happened and something was just dead where are you a collop right here actually i don't know if i've already searched these we'll, we'll find out no bonus pearls hooray nothing in that one okay Oh god, yeah, the Tribunal Assassins are proper annoying. I think the general idea was that you were supposed to just not install Tribunal until you were ready to do it, and that's why they just immediately attack you. Um, so, that's why that's a thing. In the in the Xbox version <clears throat> of Morrowind, the, the Assassins actually do not attack you until you reach level 7, so they actually tweaked it for the Xbox. Not so in the PC version, though. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I do apologize. I, I think there was some loose tea leaves in my tea from the bag, and one of them's gone down the wrong way.
next box Morrowind is extra haunted. Yeah, they, they tweaked, they definitely tweaked a few things. I, I, I'm pretty sure they tweaked some of the main quest level requirements as well, because I definitely remember um, <clears throat> getting basically told to bugger off by Caius Crusaders on the Xbox version when I when I went to his house to get the first quest from him. Because, he, you know, you, you, you click orders on him and he gives you 200 free gold and tells you to go get a job, basically. And then in the PC version, you can just click orders again straight away and immediately get the job to go to Arkansand um, to get the puzzle box. But in the Xbox version, he actually tells you to sod off it unless you're like level two or three or something. Trip is usually that the PC version is harder. Yeah, admittedly. I I, harder? Yes, no. It's it's a, it's a you know. In the PC version, you get you get murdered by assassins from day one, so you know swings and roundabouts. <laughs> but the uh, the Xbox version was definitely the slightly more polished version, if you ask me. It even had slightly nicer loading screens, weirdly enough. Don't know why I'm going this way. Don't want to be here. Although, um, are there any merchants in Urban Heart? I think they might be in the I fort. A place for you. Successfully lost. Hello. I'm getting lots of raids tonight for some reason. I should stream later in the evening more often, apparently. So what's this regarding? And also Variax. Oh, I guess you guys were playing more Baldur's Gate, huh? Welcome, Moon and Star. I have prepared a place for you. Hi guys. Welcome. We're playing randomly generated Monowind tonight. Where uh, this is not really what I wanted to be, if I'm honest. Um. Oh wait, no, no. There is the guy. Whoa. What's this about? I could ask you the same question, sir. <laughs> I've never noticed this. Why is he wearing the weird DLC armor? You got boob plates, sir. I'm not, 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 not that I'm judging. It's just, it's very unexpected. He wears the armor because of a bug. Well, it's magnificent. Either way. Hello. <laughs> he doesn't even sell it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyway. He does look fabulous. So, anyway, we're playing We're playing randomly generated Morrowind and the, the general gist of the... Oh, I forgot he has that unique hammer. Um, the general gist of it is I, I use a random character generator... Uh, that you can find online as a random quest generator and we're basically using them to play random Morrowind with basically the the uh the idea is that we only get one life so if we die then we have to roll a new character and this is character number four I think yeah this is our fourth character so far she seems to have survived a bit longer than the others uh mostly by luck I think Well, sir, I have a big pile of Dark Brotherhood crap to sell you. Theoretically, I should keep some of it myself for myself because I am a light armor character, but I just I don't like the look of the Dark Brotherhood armor. I'd rather not. Uh, he went, will he? He buys the pearls. No, he doesn't buy the pearls. Never mind. Uh, you can have these silver daggers and all. And I'll try and barter a bit more out of you. Probably could have gone higher than that, actually. But there it is. Oh my god, now he looks even worse. <laughs> right, you, you have fun there, dude. I have some money now, finally. And some spare pearls to boot. Oh, right, that's a good point, actually. We need to, we need to, we need to make sure no more assassins pop up. Uh, hello, Mr. Guard. Dark Brotherhood, Appels Matthias, yep, he's right over here, handily enough. You there, you sir. You in the very shiny DLC armor. Dark Brotherhood, yes, mainland. Transport to Mournhold, there we go, right. That, I think, is enough to stop the assassins, just, just having that conversation. 
Yeah, she is lawful stupid, admittedly, this character, so she probably wouldn't want to wear the Dark Brotherhood armor so, anyway. Where are you from? Uh, the, the, the random generator, it gives you a race, it gives you a randomly generated name, which is always, always hilarious and difficult to pronounce. Um, it gives you a class, it gives you a birth sign, and it gives you an alignment for role-playing purposes. Um, it gives you a hometown, apparently this character's hometown is Saran, for whatever that's worth. Um, it also gives you a handicap, a random handicap, uh, in this case it's Insomniac, so we're not allowed to rest ever, basically. We can rest for one hour when we need to level up, and that's pretty much it. Um, and our, it also gives you a condition. In this case, our condition is religious, which means that uh, every time we use a religious shrine of some description, we have to leave an additional offering of either a powerful magical item or just gold if we've got it. Any, any, any and all things that seem appropriate to offer up to the gods, we must offer. In addition to, you know, whatever you normally would leave. Um, it also gives you a faction, a guild, a religion, and an extra additional special thing, which in our case is our guild is fighters, our faction is Telvani, our religion is Tribunal Temple, and our special is the East Empire Company. And also, actually, one of the additional stipulations of the religious condition is that if we, uh, we, if we join... We, we must join our chosen religions, religious faction, and we must complete that faction's quest line as well. So that's why we're doing the temple stuff right now. Because we have to. We don't have a choice. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a website. It's not a mod. It's just a website. I can even give you a link in the chat. If you want to go check it out for yourself. There you go. This character was from the start of the stream, right? Uh, yes, it was. It is. Yesterday's character ended with death. It did. Uh, yesterday's stream, rather. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pay for the gondolier. I want to hold on to my monies. I think there's more than. There's like a couple of different. Uh, Random character generators available online for Morrowind, but that that's the one I'm using. Mostly because I quite like the additional random uh, handicaps and conditions it adds. But yes, this is our current character. Level 2 Redguard Hunter. And Hunter is an NPC class you can't normally pick, so... I had to get Django to go find out for me what the uh, skills and... Um, specializations for a Hunter is. Because the, uh, the generator does sometimes give you a, an NPC class. Like Savant or Commoner. Or in this case, Hunter. They, they quite often have some very interesting skill combinations, actually. Savant was a really weird one. We played a Savant recently. It's also amazing how I, how lost I get in Vivek when I don't have Distant Terrain turned on. <laughs> yeah, this character's build is, like, shockingly terrible. And yet, we're still not dead, somehow. Public Menace. Yeah, that's a fun one. We had a, we had a character with Public Menace. Fairly recently. It can also give you Vampire and Werewolf as additional conditions as well. Good for a giggle. Especially Vampire, because that really does change the way you play the game. Right. You. 
bastard with your overpriced potion. Give it to me. Considering the amount of shrines I'm about to visit, this is going to get very expensive. Ah, okay, the shrine to stop the moon. Donate a potion of rising force and ask for a blessing. Yes. Thank you for your daring, Lord Vivek. I shall not shun risk, nor hide behind the mask of cautious counsel, for fortune favors the bold and the very lucky. So now I must also give you additional offerings of things. Um, gold, primarily, I suppose. Here, you're gonna, you're gonna have... Let's, there we go, 50, 56 gold. And, um... A potion. And, and a pearl. A couple of pearls. Like, like, now one will do for now. i got more shrines to do. <laughs> there we go. Fortune favors the soon-to-be skinned, yeah. Alright, uh... Next one up is the Shrine of Generosity. Long after Lord Nerevar and the Tribunal triumphed over, da over Dagoth Ur, the people wished to build a monument to the heroes of that war. Vivek thanked them, but said that it would be better to dedicate a monument not only to the glorious heroes, but to all people, great and small, who suffered and died in the war. It became the custom to make offerings here, either in thanks of our good fortune, or for those less fortunate. The Shrine of Generosity is on the top steps of Vivek's palace, the southernmost canton of Vivek City. The customary donation for those in good fortune is 100 gold. I'll uh, go ahead and float on up there. We've got the levitate blessing from the, the moon shrine, so. One hundred gold, and uh, I guess I'm going to have to give you some extra. Make it two hundred. Stop. Clipping into the... never mind, whatever. Couple pearls, um, and uh, another another potion. There you go. Thank you, Lord Vivek. Thank you, thank you. Okay, next pilgrimage is also nearby. It is the Puzzle Canal, the Shrine of Courtesy. In a battle with Merin's Dagon, Vivek gave his own silver longsword to the Daedra Lord rather than dishonor himself by fighting an unarmed foe. This is so, this so impressed the Dramora, the most honourable and chivalrous of Merin's Dagon's Daedric servants, that they now share a bond of respect and courtesy with the followers of the Tribunal, though we must never forget that they are, are, they are our enemies. The Shrine of Courtesy is found in the heart of the Puzzle Canal, a labyrinth beneath Lord Vivek's palace in the city of Vivek. The journey through the Puzzle Canal can be confusing, and it is suggested that common pilgrims carry a scroll of Elm's CV intervention in case they get lost. The Dramora Krasit is found in the centre of the Puzzle Canal and will accept a plain silver longsword if spoken to with courtesy. After Krasit accepts the sword, pilgrims must read, read the inscription on the Triolith. Jolly good. Now, I happen to know that there is a silver longsword at the shrine for us to give to him, so I don't need to go get one. Just gonna... Oh my god, really fast swimming. Whee! Uh, we just need to... Here we go. Go ahead and kill this rat. Improve our short blade skill. There we go. Easy. Alright, so the thing the thing with the puzzle canal, the end of, the end of it here is this little riddle. Breathe the waters of his glory and the way is made clear. Um... It took me ages to figure this out when I played this back in the day for the first time. The trick is to drown yourself. You, I feel compelled to quick save right now. Even though this is Iron Man, but um, yes, you need to drown yourself. That's how this works. And that opens the way.
Boobly boo. Nice. Hello, Krasit. Hello, Longsword. Are you here on the pilgrimage? I take it that silver longsword is for me. As you see, I am unarmed, but you are brave and gallant. <sighs> Will you give me your longsword so that I may stand a chance against your might? Yes, take it. Yes, I accept this sword. Thank you. Slain. She ain't. You have the grace of courtesy. You should read the inscription on the shrine to complete your pilgrimage. Jolly good. Thank you for your courtesy, Lord Vivek. I shall speak neither hurtful nor harsh word, but shall speak respectfully, even of my enemies, for temperate words may turn aside anger. Not in this bloody game. Gold. My last remaining pearls. A potion. A spare shirt. <laughs> There you go. That's not this Dramora hot dog. Different guy. Do 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 do. There we go. Okay. Next up is the Shrine of Justice. Near the altar is Vivek's ash mask. In the days of fire when Dagothur first crept back into Red Mountain and awakened it, Vivek led refugees here as they fled the ashen blight. Weary, they rested here a while. When Vivek awoke, he found himself and all his followers encased in casts of grey ash. Frozen like a sleeping statue and unable to free himself or help his people, Vivek was filled with despair. Vivek's tears weakened his ash cast. He tore the ash from his perished followers, breathed life into their lungs and cured them of the blight. This is Vivek's heroism. His tender heart provides strength when his might fails. The Shrine of Justice is guarded within the Nisus Temple in the village of Nisus, northwest by road from the town of Old Rune. When you address the shrine, it is customary to leave a potion of cure common disease as a token of your respect for justice. Suitable potions may be purchased from the temple. Homemade potions are not acceptable. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go to the potion guy here and get one quickly. Outland. What do you want? <clears throat> There we go. Cure common disease, please. There we go. You know, it probably wouldn't hurt to have a couple of those and blight disease. Or tourist price gouging, yep. So, we're off to Nisus then. I can't remember how long this uh, levitate blessing lasts for, but it's it's quite a while. It's, it's long enough that when I r originally did this pilgrimage for the first time, I actually thought the game had, had bugged out and given me infinite levitate. Well, we've buying Django. I'm not gonna go floating around three stories high. I'm going to the Silt Strider. By the time we get to Nisus, it'll probably have worn off. <laughs> I love that every tribunal temple runs a gift shop as a side gig. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-four minutes is how long? Yeah, it's it's ages. Like if you don't rest, that's quite a lot of in-game days. Oh, 
Oh my giddy aunt. There's a, there's a text wall just dumped in the chat there. Like a ton of bricks. Uh, travel to Balmora. Where would you like to go? Uh, Aldrin? Oh god. Welcome to Aldrin, everybody. Uh, Nisus. We make a special trip just for you. Say you can back. stop waving your hand around. There we go. Actually, fast traveling is one of the few ways we can like rest to restore our health with this character, thanks to the stupid insomniac handicap. I should make a note of that. If I ever need to heal myself, just, just quickly fast travel somewhere. Yes, indeed. Goodbye, Levitate. Nice knowing you. Actually, should we just quickly try and do a bit of maintenance here? So the silver short sword gets damaged so easily. Well, that's about all the repair I can do, apparently. No, it won't work with Major Guild teleportation. It has to be like outdoor fast travel. Yes, you are correct. Okay, so there's the fake ash mask. Citizen. Oh no. The real one's in here. Thank you for your justice, Lord Vivek. I shall be neither cruel nor arbitrary, for a fair dealing earns the love, trust, and respect of our people. And there it is. The real ash mask worth 50 grand. Not that you'll ever get that amount of money for it. And also, I don't... Th I'm going to just quick save here. But correct me if I'm wrong. You, you can't actually pick it up. It just gives you a blessing. Cures disease and shiz. Uh, let's go and leave our offering over here, I suppose. Bom -bom 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 -bom. Uh, I guess we can leave a magic scroll as well. Vivex Tear Spell. We have Vivex Touch, yes. Which gives you uh, Cure, Blight, Disease, and Common Disease on Touch. And we actually do have Restoration Magic as one of our minor skills, so we actually have a 38% chance of successfully casting it, which is kind of nice. That's a useful spell to have for quests that require you to heal people and things. Uh, you are a smith. Can you repair my broken stuff? Indeed you can. Uh, let me guess. The next one's the coal cave, right? That'll be fun. Fields of Kumu. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, here we go. Coal cave. The Shrine of Valor. Within the coal cave, Vivek fought a battle with Ruddy Man, the father of the dreg. Or Drew, or Droog, or however you like to pronounce that. Uh, whenever he defeated Ruddy Man. Uh, when he defeated Ruddy Man, Vivek spared his life on the condition that Ruddy Man and his children would give up their tough hides as to serve as armor for the Dunma. The Shrine of Valor is inside the Coal Cave, a cavern on the seacoast west of the ancient stronghold of Barandus and south of Nisus. The cave, uh, the cave mouth faces south towards the sea and is marked by a large natural arch of stone. The region is wilderness, and finding the cave mouth can be difficult. Droog, within the cave itself, are fearsome enemies. Only experienced and capable adventurers should attempt to reenact the epic battle with the Drew, Drew the, the things in the cave. Uh, Drew wax may be bought at the temple in Nisus. When you address the shrine, it is customary to leave a portion of Drew wax as a token of Vex victorious struggle with Ruddy Man. Okay. Uh, let's go get some Drew Wax. Uh, I'm going to try and fight one of them. For maximum piety. But uh, in case we, in case it kicks my ass and I can't beat it, I'm going to get the, the 
factory wax now. Maximum over piety. Pronounce it differently every time just to annoy people. Yes. That is that is my policy when it comes to a lot of things like that, like chitin, chitin, kitten. Oh yeah, it's trouser guy. I forgot about this dude. Hey dude. Hi Nab stole my pants! I was taking a bath and Hi Nab Lazamzi stole my pants. Maybe you could talk to him to get my pants back. Oh my goodness, the Chaos Goblin is back, everybody. Hello, Colin. What are you doing? <laughs> He's just emerged from between my two computer monitors, stepping over the speaker. What do you want, dude? What is it? What you after? What is it, little goblin? It's my cat, for those of you who are unfamiliar. Colin is my cat. Uh, and he's also a chaos goblin because that's just what he does. Spreads chaos everywhere like a little goblin. You settling down for a nap? Yeah? Okay, you're going to use my hand on the mouse as a pillow. All right. He was sleeping in his little box for a while, actually. He's just decided to come up on the desk again. All right, where's Hynab? I'm, I'm, I need to see a man about some pants. Because I'm lawful stupid and I will therefore assist this man. Is it you? No. Someone in particular? No, where's Hynab? Maybe he has a house. Is it you? No. Laconius Manilu. Where's Hynab? It's not you, is it? Silstrada guy? No. Is it you? Is it you? I think it might be this guy. Hi, Nab. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. I'm here about the pants. Why do you want Hunters' pants? That Swit could put them on without help. But I, he must give them back to him because you are being mean, sir. We're watching you, scum. I will pay you for the pants. I will pay even more for the pants, apparently. If you wanted the pants that bad, why didn't you say so? Here, take them. It's a stupid joke anyway. Oh, Funky. Thank you very much for that gift sub. Very generous of you. Seeker Stormheart. Enjoy your emojis and stuff. It's a very expensive pair of pants, my dude. Here you go. I don't have much to give you, but have some hackle low. Here it is. Take take it. Thanks for getting my pants back. Oh, goody. Three hackle low leaves in exchange for 200 gold. I love playing lawful stupid characters. It's the best. <sighs> At least if we were an Imperial, we could do voice of the Emperor on the bastard. But we're not. We're a flipping red guard. Being a good person in Morrowind is hard, yeah, it, it kind of is. When we play, when we, when I, when I played Fathis Ulven in the, in the Let's Play on YouTube, like, it wasn't, it, like, it was surprisingly easier for a lot of it because we were playing an evil baddie. And therefore he was able to mug and kill and nick everything he wanted from people and not have a problem with it. But uh, play, playing as a lawful stupid paladin type in Morrowind is hard work. <laughs> It's 
this, this game absolutely runs on cheese, it does. When I, when I originally played this, I, I, I used to just... Where the hell am I? Oh god, I'm lost. Oh, there's Barandus over there. Phew. When I, when I when I played this back in the day and I I first found out about console commands, I used to give my console command myself like 100,000 gold at the start of every playthrough. I didn't even feel remotely bad about it. I'd just spend it all on gear and training and then just, you know, enjoy the game. <laughs> Instead of getting repeatedly beat down by it, guys like this. Random Ashlander witches, man, in this game. They are just, they are character killers. We need to be careful here. You run faster than I do. Oh, good. Throw a dick's hand in. Why not? I'm glad that we were able to go fighters guild with this character because at least I do have a supply of potions. better bow, don't we? Love that. Expensive skirt. Kind of a nice skirt, actually. I'll take it. Oh, we have an alternative. Nah, I like the other one better. Right, where's the other one? Oh god, you still have Magicka. Uh... Oh, now what wants to- Where did you come from? Go away. Be gone, Ratty. I think she keeps failing to cast a spell or something. There we go. Need like a steel bow or a bone mold one, don't we? It's, this this chitin bow is rubbish. It's terrible. for marksman training at least. Ha ha! At last. Oh for God's sake. <laughs> this patch of wilderness is absolutely cursed. Is that it? Are we done? Finally, please. <laughs> you 
Yeah, archery is actually pretty sick once you get a high enough level with it and can reliably hit your targets. Archery is kind of great. Off that renowned red guards and swordsmanship, yeah, I just, it's amazing. Like red guards start off with a plus fifteen bonus to long blade, and of course we rolled a character with short blade. Go figure. Admittedly, actually, I probably could have and should have used adrenaline rush for that fight, but really, I, I was kind of saving it for the for the fight with the with the droog. Speaking of stealth archers. Well, that didn't work. I don't want to go up there because I think there's a relatively strong enemy that hangs around at the top of that, that stronghold. I'm pretty sure that's the one where you get the uh, you get the the boots of the apostle from, though. At the very bottom, guarded well, guarded by a whole bunch of Daedra that would absolutely murder me if I tried. I think there's a Daedric helmet up there in, down there as well somewhere. From the locations you can find one. Okie dokie. Coal Cave Shrine. Journey to the Drake Wax. Thank you for your valor, Lord Vivek. I shall not quail nor turn away but face my enemies and my fear. Which gave us Swift Swim, 25 points. So let's see. Alright. Uh you can have some gold. Pop it on top of that mushroom there. You can have the hackle low leaves I got. Um, this netch leather shield. And uh, this skirt. There you go. You sure there isn't a helmet? I could have sworn there was a helmet. Like if you float right to the top of the cave, there's one perched on a ledge somewhere up really high. I feel like I'm sure there is because I remember in the Let's Play on YouTube getting yelled at in the comments for not getting the Daedric helmet when I was there. Um, right. I'm gonna go and fight a droog. Hello. That is a slaughterfish. It's not what I was expecting. Do they even spawn in here at this level? Would one of you like to come and fight me where I can actually breathe? That would do me a big favor. Oh, there's one down there. I just saw his tentacles. Ugh. Hello, sir. I believe that's you there. Right, how long does adrenaline rush last for? 60 seconds, okay. I don't know why I'm saving. Force of habit. Okay, where are you? How about you? Damn, okay, that was easier than I thought it would be. All right, drop dead. Drake has been killed. We have reenacted the battle with the ready man. I guess we can put the bonus drag wax at the shrine as well. Seem only appropriate. There we go.
Is it illegal to rest in the cold cave? I never knew that. By Jove it is. No squatting in the cold cave. By order of the ruddy man. We'll go and kind of throw you in squid jail if you if you try and rest there. This is this is why I like playing vanilla with no mods and none of the bug fixes because we get to we get to find stupid little things like that. Nothing against mods and whatnot, you know all that good stuff. Ordinarily, I probably would play with a bunch of them, um, but uh, not this time. Vanilla in all its glory this time. Uh, and, and frankly, you know, Mor Morrowind stands out among the Elder Scrolls games for me because it's the only one. Uh, well, it's the only one of the big three that that I feel I can enjoy perfectly fine without any mods at all. Um, it's not like Oblivion or Skyrim, where I, I kind of feel like I have to install at least a few mods to enjoy myself properly. Uh, okay, our next one is the final pilgrimage, is it not? It is the Shrine of Pride at the Ghost Fence, yes. The Ghost Fence is the lasting symbol of the indomitable will and power of Alm CV. And a monument to Dunmer Pride in overcoming its enemies. The Shrine of Pride is found within the Ghost Fence, just northeast of the Ghost Gate itself. The safest route to Ghost Gate is along the Foyada Mamea, a volcanic ravine running from the top of Red Mountain southwest to its end just below Balmora. An old Dwemer bridge crosses the Foyada near Fort Moonmoth. A pilgrim may follow the Foyard and Mamea all the way to Ghost Gate. Any journey inside the Ghost Fence is dangerous, but even the most timid pilgrim should be safe, so long as he does not stray too far from the Ghost Gate and flees from any minions of Dagoth Ur. When you address the shrine, it is customary to leave a soul gem in remembrance of our ancestors who were bound to the tribunal service. Okay, so uh, normally, actually, if I'm going to get to the Ghost Gate, I go via Aldrun, but I'm going to follow what the book says. So we're actually going to go start from Balmora and go all the way up the Foyada. And while I'm in Balmora, I'm going to... Why walk when you can run? Well, I was about to say I'm going to buy myself a Demon Tanto, but then I realised if I buy myself a Demon Tanto, I'm going to have to hand it over at the shrine. <laughs> so maybe not then, actually. <laughs> maybe not. I guess I'll keep this pearl for the shrine as well, huh? We do need to go buy a soul gem, though. I'm sure this is important, but I really must go. Ah, oh, oh yeah, she has one of the she's one of the few NPCs in the game with a really unique greeting. This one, I require a soul gem. Uh, a lesser one will probably do. I hope. You were scared to walk along the Foyadas expecting like, a lava flow. That's kind of funny. But yeah. Fair enough. I had a few things like that. Like I, like I always um, tried to attack Corpus Stalkers from a range because I, I genuinely thought they could give me Corpus Disease. doesn't help that the game actually leads you to believe that probably is the case because you can get spell effects which have resist corpus even though it's completely useless it would be interesting if there were like periodic eruptions from red mountain you know you kind of like the blowouts and stalker that would be kind of neat and you'd have to go seek shelter or be caught in the open and get like, you know, volcanic pumice rain down on you and stuff. Or if you're in a foyard, you know, you might get might get drowned in lava. Do you really get drowned in lava though? You don't, do you? <laughs> get incinerated by it. Oh, 
I've, I've kind of wanted dynamic effects like that in, in, in an Elder Scrolls game for a while, to be fair. Like, um, I, I, I always wanted them to make a game set in Black Marsh with, like, dynamic water levels. So when there's a lot of rain or when it's high tide, the water levels in, in the Black Marsh swamps would actually come right up. And then in times of drought, in the dry season, it would go down again and stuff, and they would actually all like completely change the way you get around the map. If they wanted to add a little gimmick to the game, they could give you a little. You could buy like a little boat, a little canoe to go paddling around in. You could, you could buy them like horses or something. Yeah, honestly, that Black Marsh is probably like the other, like, aside from Morrowind, it's like the other genuinely quite interesting province. If you ask me. I mean, you know, beyond that, it's like, okay, well, you know, if you're not going to do Black Marsh then for me, for my money, you've got you've to make a game set in Akavir, really. They won't do that, you know. Uh, generic fantasy is far more marketable, and they know this, that they found that out with Oblivion. Um, which is why we'll probably get Hammerfell and uh, High Rock, um, stuff like that. Instead of somewhere interesting like Elsewhere or Black Marsh or Akavir. Really sucking with the archery today, huh? Not even out of fatigue, we're just sucking. Some hunter we are, huh? Oh, look, there's more. Cliff Racer hitbox is weird. Sometimes you can hit them by aiming at their center of mass, and sometimes you have to sort of aim for the tail. I don't quite know how it works. And judging by the music, we are still not done. Hey, Racer Plumes. Alright, who else wants to kill me? Is there another one stuck in a tree somewhere? There's a scrib here somewhere. Hello, scrib. It's not you, though. Alright, music's gone. Moving on. The problem with Valonwood, to my mind, is it doesn't really offer you a lot of variety in terms of biomes <laughs> by its very nature. <laughs> I think a, a game that was either like the Somerset Isle and Valonwood combined, or Valonwood and Elsewhere combined, would be would be a bit more interesting. Personally, I think Elsewhere is a good shout. I mean, I know they've probably... I think they've done Elsewhere in, in Elder Scrolls Online now, and it's probably a bit boring. Uh, like most of the locations in Elder Scrolls Online, but um, retrospectively, a... a... Uh, a Bethesda made Elsewhere could have been kind of interesting. There's no oh right, yeah, you're a scout. I forgot. Stupid. Take your skin though, because it's worth ten gold. Got any cheap restore out? Yeah, let's have some of that. Got 
check this place out. And then probably run away from whatever's inside. I'm guessing it probably hasn't been long enough since I last used Adrenaline Rush to use it again. Gonna be getting damaged again, isn't it? Yeah. Gonna have to repair the sword again soon. Have I ever tried Kenshi? Yes, and I have to be honest, I'm not a huge fan. Like, it's a perfectly good game. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my cup of tea. There's a cliff racer, isn't there? Yeah. I knew it. I'm out of arrows. Well... That's annoying. I guess I'll switch to these ones. Need to loot another Fighter's Guild chest. I can level up again. Yay! Um. Oh. <laughs> Let me loot your tail. There you go. You know what? You know what? I I, I totally agree with you. Actually, Ruby Soul. Um, like the, on paper, the Red Guards, like in their mythology and culture and whatever, is actually super, super cool and interesting. I just don't have any faith that Bethesda will really stick to that very much when they actually make a, a Hammerfell Elder Scrolls game. I, I feel like they might make it boring, kind of like how they made Cyrodiil boring. But you are correct, in theory, actually, you know, you could have an amazingly cool and weird game set in Hammerfell. But they'll probably just make it sort of like generic Middle Eastern fantasy with a side portion of uh, fantasy pirates. And, uh, and the, the game's gimmick, instead of dragon shouts and dragon battles, will be, uh, you can have your own ship. Like, Assassin's Creed Black Flag style. for one hour. Level three, hooray! Speed, agility, personality, and strength. Okay. And Todd Howard will do the whole thing of it being like, oh, you know, that, oh, but we, this isn't the first time the Elder Scrolls have done this, actually. We gave you boats in Daggerfall. And be like, oh, yeah, no, we're actually being faithful to our roots, guys. He'll do that whole spiel. They'll be danger, watch out, and die! Oh, dear. This is not going well. Bye. You see how little damage she was taking? We've already, yeah, we've already used the thingy for today. I'll try and stab her a few times with this, but. Now you die. Yep, no, forget this. Oh Christ, okay. Oh, don't let this be the end. Oh. <sighs> Not like this. Not like this. But we're okay. Thankfully, NPCs don't follow you through doors in this game. Thank you, Todd, for that. What the hell is sword singing meant to be? I don't remember actually. There's a there's a there's a red dot NPC in this game that's a sword singer though. 
we bump into him in Molag Mar, I'll have a chat with him. I think we just hit peak Morrowind for today. If it wasn't the incident with the assassins, it was that. Yeah, yeah, I just say the sword singing thing definitely sounds like it has, has has Elder Scrolls game gimmick written all over it, for sure. Like you can summon a magical sword or magical weapon of some description. You can choose kind of what kind of weapon you want it to be. Um and then there'll be like a whole upgrade tree for it and thing with perks and stuff. That also is a possibility. Maybe we'll do that and pirate ships, who knows? Cause Hammerfell's weird. Like it's fifty percent pirate ships, fifty percent like Middle Eastern uh, fantasy. Yeah, there's a there's an interesting kind of tonal confliction there, I would say. Fucking what? What? Piss off, rat! Should never have come this way. This was a terrible idea. Whew. So our character suffering continues. because the cat is just steadily encroaching more and more space on my mouse mat. I, I, I can't really use the mouse on there anymore now. <laughs> he shuffled over enough of himself to pretty, pretty much completely cover it up. Foggy again, hasn't it? Oh, I see them circling like vultures. What if I sneak? Leave me be, cliff racers. Leave me be. Oh, there's ratties over there as well. Bloom is rather atmospheric, it's true. <laughs> I do like the cartoonish sidestepping animation for sneaking. Sneaky does it. Critical damage! Way our first critical of the of the of the character.
What's your favorite faction in Morrowind Tribunal Temple? Yeah, hand, hands down. In terms of the vanilla game, absolutely the Tribunal Temple. Best faction quest line. Oh, piss off. Bugger off, you stupid cliff racer. Out of my face. I have better things to be doing than stabbing the air around you repeatedly. God. There it is, everybody. Ghost gate at long last. Imperial Cult's quite fun. Yeah, I, I, Todd Howard himself wrote the Imperial Cult, and uh, they're a bit different from all the other factions, and I, I do like them. Okay. We have our soldier. Our potion. Let's go in. the Imperial Cult? I'm actually not sure now. I, I, I can't remember which one it was. I think he I think he wrote the Legion. I think he... I can't remember who it was that wrote the, 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 the cult. I know that he stepped in to write the Legion because they were running out of time and they needed to get it done, which is why the Legion feels a bit rushed. Healing yourself. aren't you dude next time we're in Vivec there's a shop I want to go to because I know it has a bone mold longbow is he regenerating his health passively or is that from his spells I think it must be from his spells Peddling into the unknown here, and that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> I get one arrow back from all that. I won't touch the corpus weepings because they're valuable, but they're also corpus weepings. <laughs> Oh my god, yes, I know player character. I, I, I feel the same way. Fifty short blade though, that's nice. Here we go, the Ghost Gate Shrine. Here's the Soul Gem. Thank you for your pride, Lord Vivek. I shall not doubt myself or my people or my gods and shall insist upon them and my ancient rites. Have some gold. Have this pearl. Rather appropriately, you might as well have these racer plumes. Um, and this pair of trousers. There you go. And the scamp skin, I suppose. There we go. There's our offerings. Okay, let's get the hell out of here.
Maybe she's adopted. Maybe indeed. Who knows? And then, uh, I get. Oh, hell, hell, hell. Oh, I'm CV intervention. Why not? Although, I probably should save that for an emergency. Ghost Gate really does look a bit pathetic without rebirth. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's go this way to Old Rune. A thoughtful to leave fresh pair of trousers there for pilgrims who have to soil themselves when they meet a corpus walker on their way there. Indeed. No, the Ghost Gate Shrine is not a, an Elm CV intervention spot. It would probably take us to either Molagmar or Aldrun. Come on then. This sword must be about to like... Yeah, it's, it's not in good condition. Which doesn't help. We're gonna do less damage, I think. We seriously need a better sword. It is silver, so we can at least fight ghosts and scams, but... It sucks! No, I was going to try and skirt around you, but apparently you have other ideas, my friend. Oh god, there's two of you. <laughs> right, is this a blighted one? You kind of... You know what? Fuck this. Bye. <sighs> I'll buy a replacement here. Tools Valen. I believe you're... Speak your need. One of the guys I can talk to. Pilgrimage of the Seven Graces. I done did it! Yes, you have finished the Pilgrimages of the Seven Graces. I commend you for this. You are now ready for more challenging duties. Do I get advancement? I'm a novice! Yay! To belong to the temple is to practice compassion. Vivek often showed compassion to his enemies. You must show compassion by curing Bulfim Grashugars. Grashugars! A Chiogorath worshipper in Melkashishi. Take this potion of cure blight. You can cure Bulfim by giving her the potion, but it is expensive. I would prefer you learn a spell such as Realm's Gift and return the potion to me. Well, we actually have Vivek's Touch, which will do the job as well. We got that from the Nisa's Shrine. Uh, Melkashishi. Uh, travel to Advalothi and head pa east past the Dejit Ruin of Ashal Mawia. Continue due east until you reach the mountains. Then follow the, the trail south until you see another Daedric Ruin. Be careful in Milkashishi. <laughs> the followers of Shergoreth are unpredictable. unpredictable. Don't go further into the ruins than you must. Yes, okay. I remember this quest because I remember it being really friggin' difficult to find Milkashishi in the first place. There is someone watching me. Hello. Can you... Yeah, there we go. A couple of um, CV intervention scrolls. For the win! potions don't you uh, you know what I'm not gonna buy any potions from here I'm gonna go get some free ones from the fighters guild speak your needs 
slowly running out of fighters guilds to raid when it comes to potions and I don't know how often those chests respawn Potions. Lovely, lovely, jubbly. Journeyman's armor. I don't think I'm gonna bother. Our armor skill is so shite. It's kind of a waste of time. Okay, well, let's. Uh, I think the first we can get north is Nisus, and then we can walk the rest of the way to Old Velothi. This, this uh, blessing lasts a while, doesn't it? Not that I'm complaining. It's a nice little boost to our armor class. Let's uh, see if this guy has a decent sword I can buy. No, doesn't. Annoying. I was hoping maybe you'd have like a, a Wakasaji or something. But no. Oh well. Speak, traveler. Ooh, do you have a better bow? You have a long bow. Which is better noticeably than the uh, the chitin one, so I'll have that long bow. Okay, that's a very, very small upgrade, but it's an upgrade. Tip, tip. Well, theoretically, actually, it's double the damage output, so. Right. Uh, I've just noticed the time, ladies and gents. Uh, thanks very much for coming along, but I am going to have to end it here. Uh, Sien slaying has has lasted a, a, quite quite a while so far, actually. Uh, longest character so far to live in spite of everything she's suffering through at the moment uh, it's kind of amazing how much the game is throwing at me and how much of it we're actually managing to not be killed by uh, famous last words I know but there it is we'll be back next weekend with more of her shenanigans as she continues trying to do all the temple quests and eventually become powerful enough to start hunting down and killing those steam centurions um yeah should be fun, I hope. Uh, we'll be back next weekend, usual time, which would normally be uh, about 5 o'clock in the evening UK time. I think that's around noon in America, in some bit of America. Not sure which one, because someone mentioned that in the Discord. But uh, regardless, I'll see you for that, everybody. Hope you've had fun. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.